All right, people, what is going on back with another episode? This is 362 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. Over here, we talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. Georgia Southern's going to be playing baseball this weekend, so I'm going to be watching that. Um, if all else, you know, fails and I don't have much football to talk about, I definitely will give you a heads up on what's going on on the baseball team. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, but with that being said, we're going to talk more Atlanta Falcons. Uh, we're going to talk about my favorite, my three of my favorite Atlanta Falcons moments. So hopefully you guys sit back. You guys will enjoy this. And if you already are a Falcons fan, you kind of know what this is. If you're looking at it on the screen, if you're listening on your podcast Avenue, we're going to go down memory lane and we're going to talk about some excellent, excellent times when it comes to uh the Atlanta Falcons. We don't have much history, but the history we do have is actually pretty cool. If this is your first time here, welcome. You can find this podcast on YouTube and Rumble. You can also find it on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. If you don't mind, check out any of those avenues that work out for you and subscribe to the a podcast. Uh it really helps and it goes a long way. And uh if you don't mind, give me a five star rating on that star chart or give me a high rating on your podcast or youtube avenue or rumble avenue and let people know what i'm doing over here especially if i do a good job if not give me some feedback and let me know what i need to do better all right let's get into this now none of these are in particular order or anything like that none of these are like you know better than the other but um i will give you some background and a backdrop on these um moments whatever the case may be and the first one we're going to talk about is the michael vick run now Michael Vick had a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of highlights as a Falcon. I mean, I remember, the, you know, the play with Michael Vick playing against the uh, Packers in the in the playoff game and um, KGB or KBG. I can't remember his name. It was a defensive guy for the Packers tried to get Michael Vick and couldn't take him down. And he ended up uh, losing yards, but broke a tackle, ended up gaining yards. Phenomenal play by Michael Vick, and they end up beating Green Bay in, you know, in Lambeau. Uh, also, um, Michael Vick had a few other runs that were pretty cool and electric. And uh, there's one thing that, that people loved about, about Michael Vick, and he's still revered to this day. And, he's, and people always compared to him based on the way, not only the way that he threw the ball, because he wasn't as accurate, but he had some zip on his passes. But this was a very, very fast quarterback. I mean, he was extremely fast, and it showed when he played against the Vikings. Uh, I think it was a 2002 game when uh, Michael Vick basically ended the game on a hell of a run. I can't remember. I think it was like a 53 or 73 yard run. I, I don't get me don't don't get me to lying because I can't remember the actual yardage. But I remember watching this at home because I thought the game was pretty much over. I think we was losing like. 23 to 24 or something like that i can't remember 22 24 i can't remember the score when what happened but i know it ended up winning 30 to 24 and uh michael vick just took off and he went around the edge went around the left side of the uh of the offense and took off up the field and he split the defense and he made two vikings run into each other what probably one of the greatest runs i've ever seen and and I will tell you, I've seen a lot of runs live either in person or I've seen it on TV, especially with me watching Georgia Southern football. If you know anything about that history, you already know there's a lot of great runs with that history of that program. But Michael Vick, as far as the Atlanta Falcons go, that was one of the greatest moments I've seen. And I was like, oh, my God, he really did this. And um, it was it was just something to really be uh, proud of. And it was a fun time. Um, that 2002 season, I think we end up going to the playoffs. I think that was the same season that we end up beating uh, Green Bay and Lambeau, I think. Don't get me wrong. I think that was the year. Um, but Michael Vick was just electric. And, and, and one thing about it, those uniforms that they had back then, I mean, with the red numbers, I mean, I, they need to find a way to bring those back. They're talking about, you know, this whole thing about the red helmets, I mean, if you're not going to bring at least a, a whole red um, old school uniform back, at least bring these red numbers back. I mean, I, the, I used to love that jersey. I don't know. I may try to find a way to get a Michael Vick jersey like that. 
it was a really cool time to be a Atlanta Falcon fan. You, I mean, we kind of knew that we wasn't going to win too much, but we knew that we was going to put on a show. And I think that's something that a lot of fans still hang on to to this day. Some of these fans really want to put on a show rather than try to win football games. But I'm going down the wrong rabbit hole. I'm going too far, but I don't, I don't need to go down that rabbit hole today. Um, the second uh this the second uh part of this in was of my three favorite Atlanta Falcon moments with the Julio Jones catch in the NFC Championship game against the Falcons. Now this I mean against the Packers. Now this was the year that we went to the Super Bowl and played against the Patriots, but you couldn't tell me at this point I thought that this team was going to win it all and we should have won it all. This was the last game at the George Dome. And we played against the Packers. And, you know, the Packers embarrassed us one year. I think it was like in 2010 or something like that. They embarrassed us one year. I think Allen Rossum was on the team. And I think he was, I think it was either Allen Rossum or Eric Weems. They got, we ran the ball back for a touchdown on a field goal. I mean, on a kickoff. And that was it. I think we ended up getting blown out like 49 to 20 something. I, I can't remember. I mean, Green Bay embarrassed us one year. We came back. In, I mean, I think ever since then, we pretty much had their number. And especially in this scene, this game right here, um, the Falcons, I mean, you know, with Mike Shanahan at offensive line, I mean, offensive coordinator, the offense was clicking, the defense was looking good. And when this play happened, when Julio Jones went across the middle, caught that ball, ran past two guys for the Packers, one guy tried to catch up with them, he broke a tackle and he stiff-armed another one and went into the end zone. You couldn't tell me at that point that we were going to, I knew for certain we was going to the Super Bowl and we was going to win the Super Bowl. And like I said, with, you know, all the circumstances that happened after the fact, which a lot of people trying to change history now since Matt Ryan's a, a Indianapolis Colt, now they're basically saying what we've been saying, that, hey, the players on the field outside of Devontae Freeman, the players on the field did not really cost that game. We did what was the, the players did what they were told to do based on the plays they were supposed to run. Don't necessarily agree with that. You should have the power to change plays, but that's another story I don't want to go down. But that play right there when Julio Jones took out the the basically the entire secondary and ran in it for a touchdown. That's when I think throughout the entire season, you know, we thought that we was doing something good. You know, Matt Ryan won the MVP, he had a stellar season, and you know, the offensive line was great, the running game was nice. You know, I mean, I don't even need to talk about the receivers. And the defense, the defense stood up and played pretty well. So I thought we was doing something special, but when this play happened, this was the play when I thought, okay, this was we were we were going to win the Super Bowl. I had this play on repeat. My wife was like, really? I was bugging my wife about it. I was like, babe, look at this. Look what Julio Jones did. Look what Julio Jones did. And and she was like, you really, really was, you know, you really turned up about this. I was like, yes, I really was turned up about this. And um, it was a really great moment. It really was. You know, I, I really was, um, I was so happy that um, we had a chance to go back to the Super Bowl and actually, you know, redeem myself from the 98 season. But, we still chasing that ring, man. <laughs> We're still chasing that ring. Last but not least, and um, and uh, it looks like it's gonna be another fairly short episode because I usually try to do twenty minutes, but we look like we're gonna be around a little bit shorter than that. But nevertheless, the last moment I remember this just like it was yesterday, um, nineteen ninety five, December twenty fourth. I was uh I just a matter of fact I just turned 13 years old. Now mind you, I became a Falcons fan in 93 because I knew about the 91 Falcons. I knew about the Deion Sanders stuff, but the thing about it was they didn't show where I lived at in Georgia. They didn't show Falcons games on television. They showed the, the 49ers, they showed like other, you know, other teams around that time. I, I the Falcons just wasn't all that popular. One of the instances back in 95 um, the Falcons was eight and seven, and they were going for a, play, a playoff spot. They was going up against the defending Super Bowl champions, the 49ers. And I thought for certain, you know, if we win, we were going to go into the, the playoffs. Now, like I said, I didn't think this was going to happen or whatever the case may be. I was like, okay, we're going to play against the 49ers. The 49ers always had our number. Don't know what's going to happen now. Mind you, this was a special for this was a special Falcons team. 
A lot of people don't really talk about the 95 Falcons like that. But you had a running back um, with uh, uh, Craig Hayward. I remember Craig Hayward was our running back, Ironhead Hayward. Um, Jeff George was our quarterback. And on top of that, we had uh, three. We had three guys that caught over 1,000 yards in receiving. I don't think, I'm not sure. We may still have seen that since. But back then, that was un, that was unheard of. June Jones was our quarterback. I mean, was, was our coach, and he liked to run a run and gun offense. And basically, it was, uh, you know, four wide receivers set, one running back in the backfield. And it was successful. Jeff George went down with the injury. I remember he went down with the injury, and Bobby Aber, um, he uh replaced Jeff George. Matter of fact, the injury was so bad. I think Jeff George was taken to the hospital. I'm not. I'm. I want to be sure, certain. I, I'm not. I, I cannot say that for certain. But nevertheless, we were down, um, twenty one to thirteen, and uh, I I remember this like yesterday. It was one because me, my mom, one of my mom's friends, God rest her soul. She's she's not she's not here with us anymore. Uh, she passed away um, back in the two thousand early two thousands. We were all in there just watching the game, and I remember it was a small color TV, and we thought for certain that okay, uh, we're not gonna we're not we're, we're not gonna win this game, and the Falcons came back and won this game twenty eight to twenty seven. Um, uh, I I can't remember if it was a touchdown pass to win it. I can't remember if it was a the Terrence Mathis. I I, I can't remember. But I do remember everybody in the end zone, like dogpiling each other, uh, jumping on each other when they fought when the the game was uh, when they when it was a touchdown, and they were I think it was a touchdown or something like I can't remember, but I just remember that moment when I realized that we was going to win the game against the defending Super Bowl champions and we was going to go from eight and seven to nine and seven and have a play we we won a wild card game, and we were going to the playoffs. I, it was probably the best moment of all of these ones that I have, and I didn't want to rank any of these, but um, it was a it was probably the best moment that I, I I've had as a football fan. Because mind you, I didn't know much about the Falcons. I was just learning, and then even in 1995, when you know I've been a fan for a couple of years, I didn't really understand what the makeup of this team really was. Because like I said, we didn't get much you know airplay of the team. But in that game, I, I actually understood, like, okay, these Falcons are starting to come on. They could do something. This is going to be really interesting to see how it goes. And, you know, this was the defining moment when I knew for certain I was going to really start following the team because I just didn't have the information or I didn't get the exposure. But I think this was one of the games where basically the Falcons started coming on on TV where I lived in, in you know, in Savannah, Georgia. That's when they really started to come on TV at this point was once they beat the Falcons, I mean, the Falcons beat the Niners, and they made the playoffs that year. Then we started seeing more of, you know, Falcons on television. And that's when, you know, a couple of a few years later, they made their Super Bowl run. And, you know, and, and you know, we started to get more, you know, um, exposure and more, you know, a wide base range within the state. You know, that's how bad it was at one point. You know, the Falcons, even in their own state, just didn't, the games just didn't come on sometimes because, or for most of the time, like I said, even though I was a fan, I really didn't watch much Falcon stuff because if you were like I, up there in the Atlanta area, you were probably like the only ones that really got the games on television. You know, we always got the other stuff. So it was a pretty good, cool moment at the end of the day. I, I, may, I may need to do a, a Pacific video on this, that particular game because that, that was probably, it was probably the best Falcons game I've ever watched. And there was a lot of good Falcons games that's out there. Like a couple of them come to mind with the other two that I mentioned. But I think this particular game is the best Falcons game I watched. And that particular season in general was actually pretty cool. When you had um, J.J. Um, Burden and Bert, uh, I think it was uh, Burton Emanuel, Terrence Mathis, I think it was Eric Metcalf. I mean, we had, some, we had a pretty cool team. So that was pretty dope. So those are my three. And um, you know, uh, they're not the top three. I don't, I don't think they'll be top three. Definitely, the the ninety five game was probably like definitely in top three. But these are three of my, of my 
three favorite Falcons uh, moments. I, I have other ones. Maybe, you know, you guys have some that you don't, you know, that you haven't really told anyone or you would like to share. Um, just let me know in the comment section or whatever the case may be. If you make a really good case for why is your favorite and give a compelling, um, you know, comment of that game or that moment, I'll probably pin it to the top of the, of the, of the comment section. I, I tend to do that a lot. So, um, but if you guys are listening on the podcast Avenue, if you want to let me know your, uh, favorite moment, you can hit me up on Twitter, which is at VF baller. All the links are down in the description. If you want to check all that stuff out. And, um, I think I'm going to end Friday on that note. If you like this uh, commentary, hit the like button. If you like this podcast, share this uh, podcast. Subscribe to the channels if you haven't already. Subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. Three of my favorite Falcon moments. I mean, I think this is a pretty good way to end the, uh, end the, you know, the, the week. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy your weekend. Do something great. Do something nice. You know, always try to take time for yourself and relax. Like this weekend, I'm going to watch more of the NBA Finals. I'm going to watch the Georgia Southern baseball team. I'm going to probably put some food on the grill, hang hang out with the family, probably play some video games, games I got back here, and just relax. You know, it's been a long week. So hopefully you guys find a way to do the same. Even if you are working, take some time for yourself while on their time off and, you know, just relax. We all need it. My son's downstairs. He's making all that noise. That's what he does. About to take him to daycare so he can play with his friends. And I'm going to get up out of here. Thank you guys for all the support. We are marching on to 1150. Just got over to 1140 on this podcast avenue. And um, the subscribers are going up everywhere. Thank you guys once again. You guys enjoyed your weekend. You guys be blessed. Peace. <laughs>